would be proceeding to our next panel discussion and this is going to be the last panel discussion of the day and the topic is digitalization in dairy sector engine behind India's white revolution 2.0 and for this uh, I would like to call on stage Mr. Sanjay Pandey general manager Banas Dairy Mr. Ashok Bansal, ex-general manager, Delhi Milk's team. Mr. Anil Bhutani, head manufacturing from Mother Dairy. Mr. Kanwar Kumar, head procurement from Assam Dairy. Last but not the least, our moderator, Mr. Manas Mishra, DGM Corporate Quality, Assurance from Patanjali Foods Limited. Let's give them a huge round of applause so that we can start our final panel discussion for the day. So, what do you? So, good evening. for the day, which is the digitalization in milk and milk products dairy industry, the engine of revolution 2.0. So before the start of the sessions, I would just like to request to my panelists to give a short intro of yourselves. So I'll start with Kavar ji. Thank you. Good evening to all. Uh, myself, Kamal Kumar. I'm heading the procurement division of Osam Dairy. Osam Dairy, we are based in Jharkhand and Bihar, our markets are there. We are a 1.5 lakh liter company as of now. It's been eight years since our launch. And uh, in terms of volume, uh, as of today, we are the largest private dairy in Bihar and Jharkhand combined. Thank you. Yeah, myself, Anil Bhutani. Uh, I started with Nestle India, then Nestle Australia, then Reliance Retail, then Mother Dairy Delhi, then Bombay, then Delhi. Friends, uh, I am Ashok Bansal. I started my career with Mother Dairy Daily, served there for two years. And after that, I joined National Dairy Development Board, Anand. And I was working in Manpower Development Division of NDDB. And I was imparting training to the trainees of uh, milk plants in Bihar, Punjab, Odisha, etc. I served there for five years. After that, I joined Patna Dairy Project, a unit of Comfet Sudha. I was the first employee there. Served there for 10 years, and I was managing the plant and quality control operations. I set up the entire quality control laboratory set up in the Ranchi, Bokaro, Mujafarpur, Baroni, various dairy plants of Bihar. I had the opportunity to train approximately 10,000 number of secretaries of the milk producers cooperative society and testers in testing of raw milk. I had an opportunity to train 5,000 women of a Bihar Women Dairy Project in running the society operations of milk collection. And after leaving Sudha, I was selected by Union Public Service Commission, New Delhi, and I joined Daily Milk Scheme, Ministry of Agriculture. Daily Milk Scheme is a subordinate office of Department of Animal Husbandry, Dairying and Fisheries, Ministry of Agriculture, Government of India. I joined as manager processing. I was promoted to the Deputy General Manager Technical, and then I worked as general manager for around five years. Uh, after then I retired from Daily Milk Scheme. During my tenure at DMS, I also handled the charge of financial advisor and chief accounts officer. And I was the disciplinary and appointing authority for all Group C and D employees of the Government of India. I was the permanent member of Standing Committee of Agriculture. So my experience, 
after that i joined delhi government in education department and looked after the maintenance of the infrastructure of schools i was managing schools with the student strength of approximately 20000 and uh, presently i am working as consultant and training the manpower for the private dairies in um, up bihar so my whole experience was in government sector only where it is very difficult technology innovations were not much tried but because because of the different reasons whatever the you have to follow gfpr gfr everything with those limitations you know your hands are tightened it was difficult but still continued so uh, i'll be able to present something on the handling losses which was my subject thank you thank you bansal sahab uh, i heard so many times mention of bihar patna so i was almost tempted to tell that i am native of bihar uh, that is one part of my introduction i am from bihar so good and then i did my Uh, dairy technology. I am dairy technologist by education. Work several organizations. Uh, Banas Dairy is my first job. Also, I started my career from there. Then, Wadi Lal, Nestle, 12 and half years. Then uh, several assignments I did. Did abroad uh, and in country as well with Nestle. 12 years are long years in various departments. Uh, and then uh, of course hinge uh, for a short stint abert also so and diageo i mentioned in my first half which is uh, world's number one alcoholic beverage company so this is the background and today we'll have a very lively discussion i hand it over to manas ji thank you uh, so thank you sir thank you for this so basically are a part of my introduction Uh, my name is Manas, and I am introducing myself as uh, currently with the deputy general manager with the Patanjali Foods, taking in charge of food operation activity for this on behalf of the segment. Uh, basically, I am a postgraduate in industrial chemistry, and uh, I work with the many more organizations with ITC, Rocket India, so so long all of that. So uh, we are starting the sessions uh, with uh, this summer sir to so have a view on that the digitalization in the dairy supply chains. compelling the better ideology for that so it's over the call sir if it's your use please thank you manaji <clears throat> so how digitization in dairy supply chain is enabling better decision making so the entire dairy supply chain starts right from rearing of cattle to village level collection to chilling plant lab quality testing logistics transport transport from tankers to processing packaging and then to reach the end use consumers so there is a whole chain where decision is being done and it's possible so although i am in procurement i would like to restrict my experiences and thoughts uh, on the procurement part itself so as you all know as of today for the past 6 7 years we have seen <clears throat> there has been a lot of uh, telecom infrastructure developed even in rural areas network is there so iot cloud based real time collection system is prevalent and uh, i hope so i presume that most of the dairies here they are using <clears throat> this cloud based collection system real time at village level <clears throat> and at chilling center level so what are the changes which is happening by usage of this amcu based uh, iot based uh, systems so definitely first of all is the transparency so when a farmer comes to pour milk at a village level collection center the quantity the fat count snf count is displayed the rates automatically generated and sms real time basis sent to the farmers 
a good rate so the farmer is able to assess what is the rate which is getting the amount now for a dairy company what is happening ease of billing enabling trust level of farmers and maybe a predictive analysis of what is the volume which is coming as every dairy company sees a lean and a flush season so a prediction that what will be our milk volume for the coming months in the lean season or maybe during the flush season beyond that i would like to share our experiences for the past one and a half years which we are practicing as a pilot project in bihar so data we used to wonder ki we collate data we get data but how to make use of that data how can that data be used for a dairy company to enable a better decision making so we started a pilot project so uh, just a background of that uh, after uh, the pandemic so the demand had gone down the farmers started selling their cattle and everything was uh, i hope so everybody knows what happened during those two years so definitely the milk production had gone down post 2020 and suddenly the markets when they started opening up the demand shot up and there was a huge scarcity of milk in the markets so just we thought ki how come how to see that the farmers the dairy farmers they are interested or they see their future in the dairy industry which we thought that uh, it will be difficult in coming long run ki most of the so there we are uh, there in bihar and jharkhand so there are very migrant labors there so just we thought that how is dairy going to survive in the coming long term basis so we picked up a pocket a village zone in a radius of 10 kilometers and we started a cattle induction come training program for the farmers so now what we did so we uh, have taken an app it's a uh, iot based company stellaps so it's a moon based app so we started village level our own level collection in those villages a chunk of villages in a radius of 5 to 10 kilometers we started taking data of cattle so that app records the data of the cattle I mean, farmers if a farmer has two cattle we record that data now what we record in that data so that app gives us a benefit of recording the breed age lactation cycle and weight so now we get that data the weight according to the girth of the cow we get everything now so using an app is not an end in itself so how do we use that so what we did we got our feed design based on that individual cattle weight what is the amount of quantum of feed required so that was the first thing we did secondly we started monitoring in that app there was a uh, options that uh, deworming vaccination cmt test which we started monitoring on our daily visits to the farmers which then led to and also that app gives a particular reminder if we record the lactation cycle of that cow so that uh, itself gives a alert at what period what is the um, tentative period that the cow will come come, come in heat so what is the appropriate time for the ai again once the ai is done it is recorded in the app then on the 41st day again an alert will come what happened if the cow gets pregnant it's okay if not then another 60 days we'll have a pd test done now what that data what that led to us a timely reproduction 
of that cattle. So, the overall exercise, the thought process was, it is only one way where we can just encourage, motivate our farmers to do dairy farming is that they get a good milk productivity, a good lactation cycle, a minimum of cows should get a 8 to 10 uh, lactation cycles in their life, a good rate. So how to get a good rate? So normally farmers, they always cry ki, mere ko rate nahi milta hai, mere ko dairy company daam nahi deta hai, pani ka daam mein hume doodh ka daam milta hai, but they don't realize ki, if they take care of that cow, a good feed, timely AI, timely vaccination, timely deworming, the milk quantum, the TS count will definitely increase. Through this digitization, we came to know through that data that there was a visible change in the milk productivity, in the TS count, and the rates. So very simple thing, so we have a model dairy farm also. We just created a model dairy farm. See, हमने किसान को बुलाया, बोला भाई देख, ऐसे breeding करते हैं, हमने पांच गाय पाला हुआ है, ऐसे-ऐसे record करते हैं, ऐसे-ऐसे treatment करते हैं, ऐसे-ऐसे ये करते हैं। क्या मिलेगा उससे? आप दो महीना follow कर लो, आपको क्या मिलेगा? आपको अच्छा rate मिलेगा। So it's a very simple thing. Even before the panelist, before we were just discussing all the panel decision कि भाई how to motivate the farmers कि they are ill informed. It's a very simple thing. Give them a good rate. If they're getting the good rate, good amount, they will definitely buy a second cow, third cow, fourth cow, and so on. So, now, what happens to a dairy company in that case? So, we want good quality milk, good volume of milk. That change in quality, because that is the milk which we collect and which we process and send to the market. So that change in the quality gave us a good quality taste standards have definitely changed after that. So overall in a summary I would just have suggest that a good monitoring real time basis data collation can definitely lead us to to a better decision making. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, really, it was a favorable knowledge for all of us. Uh, so just a sorry, slight question from my side. Sure. So what was the use of this SILEF for this empowering this uh, cattle productivity? So uh, during the course of our uh, work, we just saw that uh, the use of silage is not very prevalent in India. So the Europeans, Americans, they really swear by it. They are using silage. But in India, we are not. So during our pilot project, we just uh, trained our farmers to make the silage at home, 45 day period, in a gunny bag, in a silage bag. We just prepared. It's very easy to use, easy to weigh. And what happened? the cow really liked the taste and the productivity of milk also increased after taking silage. So what happens? See the cow has four stomachs as you all know. So that rumen, the first portion of the stomach, that work when a cow eats, swallows and that work is just half. That means the effort taken by the cow to eat a normal uh, feed as compared to a silage. So we just saw in our data collection that after taking silage, in a span of four to five days, the milk volume of a cow gone up from eight liters to 12 liters. So we should definitely, as a dairy company uh, among us, we should just try to promote the use of silage. Okay, so thank you. Thank you, sir. So uh, the, uh, my this next topic with this panelist, uh, uh, Bansal sir, about the how technology uh, about the production waste and with the line loss control product, product loss, losses about that. So it's over to you, sir. Uh, thank you, Mr. Manav. Thank you. Uh, today, I'll be speaking on product waste prevention. 
it is a topic of lot of importance because when we are working in a plant we have to ensure that the, our factory or our plant or our organization it becomes financially viable so the product waste prevention plays a very important role today in managing a, a dairy plant or say an organization because the losses they directly affect the financial viability of a plant and apart from that they increase the bod load and lot of money has to be spent on reduction of the bod as well as if losses are more discharge waste water is more then huge amount of water has to be treated and handled by etp the if you see the two components of milk that is fat and snf they are very expensive as on today the fat may be ranging from the rate of the fat may range from 600 to 700 rupees per kg while that of snf may range from 350 to 400 rupees per kg so every kg every kg and increased kg of total solid loss during the working will directly affect the finance will directly affect the financial viability of the milk plant so the maximum the limit you can't fix for fix for a plant because depending upon the product mix then the testing accuracy then availability of infrastructure modernization etc losses are directly dependent on those things in some of the plants where lot of modernization has taken place in acceptance of milk processing of milk manufacturing of products testing the losses may be negligible while in general milk plants the losses of total solid may vary from 1 to 2% and in in very good factories the losses of solids may be even less than 0.5% in the automatic milk plants there are losses on positive side that is not pos possible when input is less output can never be more unless you uh, compromise with the incoming quality of milk and once out outgoing quality of milk then without that it is not possible that our handling losses are going to be positive the control of losses in the dairy plant it involves a three point approach the we must know where we are the overall plant losses must be determined the sources of losses should be ascertained we should know what are the sources at which stage we are losing more and at which stage we are losing less and we have we should have means to eliminate all the controllable losses and and those which can't be avoided that we have to cap that also we have to cap at the minimum losses as you know the techniques which we follow directly they can be measured by accounting that opening plus opening plus uh, incoming is equal to closing plus disposal plus loss so the difference between op these two a plus b we can say the opening plus uh, incoming and uh, c plus d we can say the uh, dispatches and closing so if c plus d is should not be more c plus d will will always be less only so the difference between these two will be the losses so directly you can measure by uh, daily accounting in different sections and then finally uh, monthly accounting can be done is done normally and by direct measurement of the bod we can find out the handling losses for example if a milk plant is handling 2 lakh liters of milk and simultaneously it is also generating 2 lakh liters of waste water which has a bod of 600 ppm so bod uh, waste water of 600 ppm that will give generate approximately 120 kg of bod and 
in laboratory we, we estimate the bio, 10 liters of milk will give 1.2 kg of VOD. So if we back calculate for a 2 lakh dairy plant with a BOD of 600 ppm, we will be losing approximately 1,000 liter of milk that will be going to the drain. Our aim should be such that our BOD on daily basis, we should by regular monitoring, by regular sampling, and by installing the flow meters which give the exact flow of the uh, wastewater around the clock, we can measure the BOD and a milk plant handling 2 lakh liters of milk, we will be losing approximately 1,000 liter of milk which will be going to the drain if the BOD value is 600. Similarly, if the BOD value becomes 1,200, so in that case the waste milk which will be going to the drain will be increased to 2,000 liters per day. So by direct measurement of BOD value in a system or by <coughs> we can measure the, measure the losses. There are various sources of losses, which we know. One is inaccuracy in weighing, inaccuracy in sampling, inaccuracy in testing, leakages and spillages, inaccuracy in drainage, returns, product spoilage, and inaccuracy in packaging. Weighment normally does not cause much loss because digital displays are there of the weigh scales. So the earlier, if when we had to see the uh, weighs, uh, the visual examination, visual seeing of the weigh scale, parallax errors were there, and that used to create the actual weight difference. If the operations of weighment are not done properly in the weigh ball if the weight of earlier receipt is not allowed to drain properly, that will add to the weight of the next consignment. So draining of the weigh bowl, leakage of from the weigh bowls, etc., they are very important in controlling the weights. Weigh bowl, weigh scales, they have to be checked periodically and proper good AMC should be given for the weigh scales that we have to take care. Sampling is very important. We know without proper agitation, if samples are drawn, uh, that will give the wrong results. So a milk, if it is having, uh, simply simple to elaborate, milk with 5% full fat, and there is a variation of 0 0.05, and if we give a 5.05, so a level of 0 0.05 will increase the fat loss by 1%. So that is very important. Testing, we have to take, uh, samples have to be well preserved and testing has to be very accurate. The maintenance of the plant, that plays very important role in the control of handling losses. Leakages of the pipeline, leakages from the pipelines, leakages from the valves, leakages from the vats, overflowing, then power failure. They disturb the operations and the operation time extends. So the number of batches, they have to, we have to make more batches for a given capacity of the plant. The continuous run of the plant is affected. We should ensure that our dryer, our cream separation operation, our pasteurization operation, they should run continuously for hours together rather than tidbits so as to control the handling losses. Type of packs, number of packs, smaller the packs, we know higher will be the total solid losses. Then flushing. Flushings from road tankers, flushings from the milk cans, flushing from the pipelines, flushing from the 
pasteurizers flushing from the storage tank they play a vital role in increasing or decreasing the handling losses a milk plant which is which may handle approximately 5 lakh liters of milk per day the total flushings which are generating generated from these equipments may go as high as 20000 liters of flushed water so this flushed water should not be allowed to go waste it should be immediately chilled to temperatures below 4 degree centigrade and then it should not be allowed to get spoiled chilled to 4 degree centigrade stored and that goes flushing is used for standardization purposes or for drying purposes or whatsoever so it should not be neglected and flushings play a very important role and they contribute to around 0.5 to 0.6 percent of the total handling losses so if a plant is having 2.2 to 2.5 percent of total solid loss approximately 0.5 to 1 percent will be contributed by the flushings from equipments pipelines vats etc etc another thing which becomes a big reason for handling losses is the unsalvaged material from the returns wrong planning wrong coding behavior of the sales person behavior of the salesman they directly affect the quantum of returns from the market so in a good organization we should have a strict watch on the returns which are coming from the market and ensure that because of the faulty policy for the operation we are not getting we are not getting the returns and we are not able, we are not losing on account of non salvages from the return another big cause for handling losses is the product spoilage at dog spoilage should not be there sourage has to be bare minimum you can't recover solids from the sour milk even if you recover you will not get the full recovery there has to be a complete loss prevention program there has to be measure wastages have to be measured yields have to be ascertained losses of by products should be quality control we have to set target record and display recoveries and losses on the daily basis the employees they should be conscious in respect of the handling losses and they should be instructed to manage the plant operations and manage the equipment in such a way that the handling losses the losses of total solid are bare minimum which directly affects the financial viability of our plant another thing which has to be taken care is the processing procedures in various plants out of the fear reprocessing is carried out instead of going for proper cip instead of maintaining the correct temperature correct strength and proper application time of the detergent we go for reprocessing of milk so cip operations they have to given the utmost care they have to be diligently carried out where automation is not there so that the our keeping quality of the products which we are manufacturing that is high and we do not lose we do not have handling losses on account of lesser keeping quality of our products now to conclude uh, i will briefly inform what are the different
operations where we have and what is the losses which occur at different stages. See, these are not the ideal losses. Nothing is ideal. Our motto should be such that whatever handling losses we were having yesterday, they should not be, the, we should not have losses to the same extent today. And whatever losses we are having today, we should not have the handling losses to the same extent tomorrow. If we go with this policy, this vision, this mission, then only we will be able to make up and make the, our organization financially viable. To conclude, generally, to say whatever, these are the in liquid milk processing, approximately 0.5% of total solid is lost. In cream separation, 0.5% total solid is lost. In butter making, it is only 0.2% of total solid loss. In ghee, 2.524%. In poorly maintained plant, where no care is taken, the fat loss may go as high as 8% in ghee manufacturing and ghee packing. Primarily, uh, overflow of the uh, melted butter from pre-stratification vats, then from cooking vessels, and then losses during the packaging. In ice cream, it is generally 2% of total solid that have been handled, handled are lost from ice cream production to the packaging. In cheese, 2.5 and milk powder, 2 to 4. In a, in a semi-automatic plant and in the type of plants which are there in our country, the, with our efforts, we should see that our handling losses, they do not go beyond a certain limit. And for your own plant, depending upon the thing, various factors, it should not be more than 3%. While in automatic plants, the losses, because of proper coordination, proper monitoring, and lot of control, the losses may be of total solid may not be even more than 0.5%. I think I'm right, Mr. Pandey. Uh, you are handling approximately is handling uh, 60 lakh to 80 lakh liters of milk, and uh, directly the um, quantum of two solids lost will directly affect the money going to the drain per day. So that depends, and uh, we should ensure at the end of the day that uh, handling losses are kept bare minimum. This is a chapter which can't be control, uh, which can't be ignored, and we have to make all efforts to control the handling losses and waste reduction. I'll repeat again because it is it does not directly only directly affects the financial viability, but also increases the BOD value, and we cannot afford to discharge wastewater of very high BODs, BOD values. So BO, a dis, waste discharge of 200 ppm is always better. And that is possible only if we have a proper check on spillages, leakages, wastages, pilferages, and important total solids going to the drain. This is perhaps I wanted to say in my presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for this nice elaboration of the data digitalizations and uh, uh, losses during the product process conversion, what are going on in the industry. So as we are running on the short span of time, so uh, I would just like to hand over to uh, Anil, sir, about this uh, topic of this, how technology increasing the production efficiency and uh, reducing waste in supply chain. So I'm sorry, please. So I'll not uh, take that much time. Because, uh, 
he completed the whole dairy industry in that particular uh, <laughs> presentation my my only brief is uh, i'm sharing you know the technology which we are using in mother dairy to control our uh, overall system losses that let it be manufacturing let it be supply chain let it be logistic let it be planning because everybody knows uh, you know all dairy products milk and milk uh, products have a shelf life and uh, they are all uh, products work under cold chain so you know we need to deliver as fresh as dairy product to the customer and within the shelf life and it should not expire the shelf life because after shelf life legally we cannot sell so the planning becomes very very critical and very crucial on day to day basis and that planning even happens on day time also night time also because most of the supplies in dairy industry happen in night time so special on the milk like pouches which we are delivering to city whole city let it be bombay delhi gujarat everywhere having a 2 to 3 day shelf life and uh, fermented products having a day of shelf life so the planning the tools we are using nowadays in technology the software we are using where uh, you know even everything all the data is on mobile now apart from company computers the planning system not on whatsapp there is a special software with us on the mobile where the distributor retailer everybody fills the daily demand and they submit the money and they give the detail then only order is taken and then only order those are compiled in factory and then totalized how much we have to produce for tomorrow so that kind of planning we are doing in dairy industry especially in milk and fermented products and paneer and these kind of things where shelf life is short even in the case of ice creams also where the shelf life is bigger let it be a ghee or cheese still we monitor through our software you know how much day shelf life products are lying where in the market are they moving they are fast moving slow moving non moving so for company all the finished product if it is not sold that is a part of a loss and that loss becomes a huge when the planning is not accurate so the requirement of tool is also very important the input in the tool is also very important and you know the information through which area which are moving non moving everything is very important for us so we have a tracking system on hourly basis in our company we, we track how much orders are coming why orders are coming even you will not believe the weather god can change our orders suppose we have a rain unplanned rain the orders of fermented product will drop they will not move so the supply chain the data monitoring through that tool every hour we are keep on monitoring and then we give to process people that this much manufacturing they have to do and there is no if and buts there is no percentage that has to be accurate because according to that only backward integration the planning of milk and other raw materials is also being planned side by side so that milk raw material collection arrangements is done on a little bit approximation plus minus 5% but the planning from our side is happening in such a accurate way that the finished goods should not go as a waste so that is our main objective to keep it as far as possible bare minimum so whatever milk we produced in pouches that should sell that should not because these dairy products are not returnable in factory is for sure so the sales people marketing people take care the orders they take that are sellable so the input data from sales shopkeepers everywhere is very important so even the finances also side by side the person has given a money or not nothing is given on a credit everything is being only product is being given when the money is being accounted for and checked for so you can imagine the whole 24 hours 
our systems keep on working, our people keep on working to see, you know, the things plans are accurate, and for that we need a good software to work for and the technology to work for. And now let's see how the, this AI is coming, how that will help us further to reduce wastages. That will be another thing to be seen in future. Uh, so that's a, that will be a future of dairy, that you know how wastages of finished products can be reduced in the market, so that that can provide a data and give a red flags. These are the areas where things are not moving. So you have to shift that particular thing. So everything has a cost. In dairy industry, already the margins are very thin, so the planning becomes very, very crucial for us. So the finished goods wastage should not happen. Apart from what Basal Saab is saying, the fin you know, the product losses. Product losses is still in the boundary of four lines. But if you manufacture the product with all the efforts and that don't sell, you know, that is the, that is the imagine the pain we have in the business. So that is why technology is very important for us to monitor the data and that is on an hourly basis. So that kind of system we already have in system and that works us to minimize you know, wastages in the whole chain and that is how the automation also work in that. Thank you very much. Thank you sir. Thank you sir. Thanks a lot. So uh, the last time handing over this to uh, sir, about the uh, new technology innovations for the dairy industry and challenges to be going on for the future. Please, sir. Thank you, Manish ji. Uh, time is really uh, slipping from our hands. Uh, very little time left. I am just trying to cover up very quickly. See, uh, what changes technology is making uh, in the dairy industry? Uh, I try to relate this subject a little bit. See, uh, our food industry has evolved from the kitchen. So kitchen, our household kitchen is the first primitive form of the technology. Similarly, most of our animal husbandry, most of I am saying, uh, has evolved from the domestic household farms. And how, if we see the evolution of the mankind, becoming one of the wisest species in the creation of the God. What's the difference? Difference is that man has been able to understand its surrounding, the regions behind that, the rational behind that, and then able to understand, express, translate, create literature and apply for the future development. This is, if you see, this is the evolution. This is what is happening constantly. For a metaphor, just to give you a kind of comparison, uh, not metaphor, I would say it's a kind of a comparison only. So go back to the, we have not seen the Stone Age, but what mankind was doing? They were only sharpening their tools. They started with the stone, they made the wheel, they invented fire. In the process, they were making everything simpler. They were mechanizing the things. They were developing the things from their surrounding. They were learning a lot of the things. And then they were trying to make their life easy. That is the process of evolution, that that process will continue. Even today, we are not in Pasan age. We are not in Stone age, but still we are doing the same. We are talking about digitalization, mechanization. At least they developed the machines, but now we are talking about machine learning. This is the branch of the uh, uh, artificial intelligence and all that part. So, what technology is doing and surrounding, when I talk about the surrounding, everything other than us, our inner self is surrounding. For example, our customers are surrounding, our machines are surrounding, our processes and technology which we have documented they are also kind of surrounding, everything is environment except us. So from that environment, we invented and we understood the behavior of bacteria, we understood the, the, uh, the process of heating, we understood the process of chilling and then we made it a science. And that is going to happen even tomorrow also, even for the years to come also. And uh, technology, our subject, 
our group discussion is on digitalization. Our subject given to us is digitalization. One part is digitization and one other one is digitalization. There is a little difference between these two words itself. Anything which we are making computer readable, even if we are scanning and storing on the computer, that becomes digitization. We have given it a digital format. But when you go beyond that, we are developing SAP, we are developing artificial intelligence, understanding, building certain libraries and that libraries are able to predict the future trends, etc. Where the analytical capability and the structuring of the data, real-time data and information is projected in such a way that you can understand the future ahead. That is the kind of the whole evolution process is giving back to us. So it is the process of ev evolving and we now the age of evolution has been taken over by automation and digitalization and in that context we are sitting here and we are talking. <laughs> and very quickly I count on that what are the things which technology is changing. There was technology before in the stone age also. The same technology means we are trying to make our life better. Machines are convenience. Our knowledge is our, our knowledge is what? Our knowledge is pro observing, processing, documenting and trying to apply it. That is what is knowledge. So in that context, machines and technology is enabler. Enabler because they are giving us innovative solutions. The man of the stone is also did the same thing. Nothing much different. Only the scale has changed. The scale has changed. Similarly, the another part digitalization and machine automation is doing is precision and controls. We are going to the PPT, PP, V levels. We are going to decimal fourth point density measurement, etc., etc. Automatic triggers, signages, like our car insurance guy. He, is a, he starts pestering us two months ahead. Your car insurance is due, that is technology. And similarly, the efficiency, speed, performance, because today if you have to do more than 500 crore to 1000 crore projects, you are, we are able to do it. We recently built out another factory in nine months time. So what is that? In order to prepare the soil for making the, for doing construction, it used to take six months. Now a simple machine like JCB is able to do that job, but they are charging hourly basis for which you have to deploy so many people for so many months. So they in technology is playing the role of enabler. They are giving precise solutions. They are giving in time solutions. They are real time solutions. They are available. Technology is available everywhere. You go on cloud, I'm sitting in my desk. I digitalize my complete laboratory. I can see the reports of all my six, seven factories. All FTIR and all these machines, what are they doing? More than 400 ta tankers are coming in Banas Dairy every day. And then you have to monitor more than 16 to 20 parameters, which you can do in less than 30 seconds time for each tanker. That, that is the role technology is playing. You go to the chromatography and on part per trillion you are measuring. <coughs> that is the level of precision is there. So we are not no more talking about lactometers and all, all density meters which are giving you decimal to the fourth point. So somebody asked me what is the advantage of having the fourth point on the decimal density measurement. When I am measuring on the fourth at least I will be correct on the third or the second place. When you are just measuring on the first place, how do you know that how correct you are? When your reference methods are less accurate and their technology is playing the role to go to the second point of the decimal. So that is the change technology is bringing. Uh, time is not available. It is very interesting subject. I just wanted to add that in a mole, one of our unions, Kera Union, made the entire dairy paperless. So if milk fat is coming less, the trigger will go to the veterinary doctor. Veterinary doctor will get the alert that this society is supplying less SNF than
go check my status, subclinical, diseases, etc. Everything. Tanker has moved from there. What is the dynamic level? How much milk is poured at what stage? What is the temperature in the society? You know, why the bacterial count and the temperature, etc., are linked? On time payments, you know, complete backward traceability of the milk to the farmer's point and the farm. All this is so technology is another. Digitalization is another tool added to that. Automation and digitalization, they all go <coughs> hand in hand. It is another form of mechanization. It is another mechanization means movement. Move on, keep move on. I will take two minutes. I just remembered one subject. There is one, uh, Muda is the word. This is called waste management. Two of the colleagues, panelists, they talk about the waste. There is an acronym, TMOODS. There are seven types of waste. T for transport, I for inventory, M for movement. I'm not going to into detail of this. It will take a long time. W for waiting. You, will, you can correlate in your real world because we are all from the industry. Over processing. Another overproduction, D defects, and now S they have added to that for skills, silent get it wasted. Mediocrity is killing because we are not able to elevate, elevate ourselves. So if you have not envisioned that super superlative quality and you compromise with the mediocrity, what will you do? You will kill, kill the excellence. You will kill the excellence because you have saturated yourself here. And all the ploy, all the techniques, all the things which you are doing, it will limit you to below middle level, below average level. Talks could be about the excellence, but you will limit yourself to the average level. I just want to leave it here. Okay, thank you, sir. Thanks a lot. So uh, we just have an award on this uh, production loss, waste management about these financial textures on the things. Uh, the last to be summarized on these uh, segments because we are already uh, out of the times. So the traceability is on uh, most important factor for the digitalization world because the traceability doesn't limit it only to the legalization but it limits us to the trust of the customers, trust of the suppliers and everything where we have to go on that. It's not only up to lift it to the SAP system, the IP system or the RFID or the artificial intelligence, it is something which could work on improve on the accuracy, data analyzing, something on the product friction basis and quality prospectives also. So rather than uh, implementing these all factors, it's, it's uh, an ideology and because we have the system in advance, we have the artificial intelligence, we have the sensor based technologies and the many more softwares we have in the inbuilt in the systems that it's quite important that we should go for the traceability system for the end to end level so that it could generate a trust level, it could generate a data level, it could generate a performance level for over the systems, compliance industry and uh, for the trust version to build up network for the Indian dairy systems also. Thank you. It's over to all. Thanks, sorry for that. I'll wait. Okay, thank you so much to all the panel members. Let's give them a huge round of applause, everyone. Okay, so uh, with this, uh, to felicitate all our uh, panel members, I would like to call on stage. Mr. Nalin Sharma, he is the CEO of uh, Lotus Enterprises. Thank you. लेकिन जब पशुओं की गणना करते तो बहुत पीछे रह जाते हैं इसी तरह आपने एक बताई प्रक्योरमेंट के अंदर समस्या ये है कि हमारे यहां देशी पशु है और आपका नाप गण कहता है कि किसी भी देशी पशु को दूध देता है उसको आधा पशु आहार और उसको देना चाहिए तो आज के दिन पशु आहार और जो देते हैं तो उस हिसाब से हमको वापस उत्पादन नहीं मिलता है और हमको पेमेंट नहीं मिलता है तो एक तो अपना देश ही नजर है आपके नाप दंड के अनुसार हम उनको चारा या बटा देवे हैं कैटल फीड तो हमारे पड़ता नहीं खाता 
दूसरी एक समस्या है ओलेस्टिन गयों की ओलेस्टिन गयो एआई आपने एआई का कहा एआई का परसेंटेज बहुत कम रहता है और ओलेस्टिन गयों के अंदर फैट ऐसे में जो कई बार तो ज्यादा दूध होता है उनका पीएफए एक्ट के अंदर भी नहीं आता दूध हमारा फेल हो जाता है और वापस रिपीट बहुत ज्यादा होती वो पशु बेकार हो जाता है तो पांडे साहब तो क्यों के अपने इंदौर में अपने भारत के अंदर सबसे आगे भी धूप ठीक ठाक करने वाला है तो ये मेरी जिज्ञासा है बीस पे अपन आप लोगों को विचार करना चाहिए देश पशु है उसका ये पी एफ एक्ट वाला है ये जो अमेरिकन गए हैं इनका भी कुछ पी एफ एक्ट के अंदर सुधार करो या इनको आउट करो सर आपका सवाल बहुत बड़ा है हम लोग टाइम में रन आउट हो गए हैं सिर्फ दो चीजें कहूंगा इसमें क्योंकि मैं कई बार हो सकता है कि कुछ सोच को कुछ सोच पब्लिक होती है लोग वैसे सोचते हैं कभी कभी हम लोग जो किसी सब्जेक्ट को अध्ययन करते करते अध्ययता के रूप में स्टूडेंट के रूप में बोल रहा हूँ मैं इस बात को स्पेशलिस्ट के रूप में नहीं तो कुछ नजर आता है तो आपके सवाल का ये मैं होल्स्टीन और जर, जर्सी और एक्जोटिक ब्रीडों से हमारा उतना बड़ा कंपटीशन नहीं है मैं किसी को सुना था कि अगर हमारे पास तो माँ है तो वो भैंस जो हमारी है ना उसको हम लोगों ने सही तरीके से हार्नेस किया नहीं किया सिर्फ कॉपी पेस्ट की तरह एक सॉल्यूशन की तरह देखा अगर वो चाहे छः महीने उसका लेक्टेशन पीरियड भी कम है लेकिन उसका जो भी दूध है वो डबल क्वांटिटी तो है ही ना बफलो के ये बाकी ब्रीड से अगर कंपेयर किया जाए तो ये सारा कुछ एक्सपेरिमेंट आर्टिफिशियल इंसेमिनेशन कर लेने के बाद हमको एहसास हो रहा है कि वापस हमको भैंस की तरफ जाना चाहिए और लोग जाना भी चालू की कर दिए हैं बहुत लोग तो सवाल आप मेरे से अलग से मिलिए आपके प्रश्न बहुआयामी हैं इसमें कई प्रश्न हैं ठीक है ना और इसको मैं एक वाक्य में आंसर नहीं कर सकता लेकिन हमें सोचना होगा ये जो आज की डेट में गाय की जो दुर्दशा में देख रहा हूँ सड़कों पे वो सब्जेक्ट को भी सरकार को उतना ही तक नहीं आप जो बोल रहे हैं वो सब्जेक्ट भी एक सोचने के लायक है भैंसों को फुल उनकी कैपेसिटी को यूटिलाइज करना सोचने के लायक है हम अपने नेटिव ब्रीड्स जिनमें पोटेंशियल है और कुछ जगह काम हो रहा है इस पर बहुत बढ़िया बढ़िया जहाँ पे कि हम अपने नेटिव ब्रीड्स को कर रहे हैं लेकिन वहाँ एक लिमिटेशन ठीक है ना कि प्रोडक्टिविटी और हम वर्ल्ड नंबर वन हो गए हैं कि दोनों में से किस रास्ता को चुने कितना चुने लेकिन मुझे लगता है कि इस कंडीशन में वापस भैंस के दूध को कितना पिए और किस क्वांटिटी में पिए और कितना मेहनत करते हैं उस अनुपात में कितना पिए लेकिन अगर कोलेस्ट्रॉल देखा जाए प्रोटीन देखा जाए बाकी न्यूट्रिएंट्स देखा जाए और उन न्यूट्रिएंट्स की क्वालिटी देखा जाए जो रेफरेंस वैल्यूज हैं उसमें मैं पर्सनली फील करता हूं कि क्या उनके रंग के आधार पर उनको ऐसा सोच लिया गया कि उनका दूध इतना अच्छा नहीं है कभी मैं ऐसा सोचने के लिए भी मजबूर होता हूँ अगर हम उतना श्रम नहीं कर रहे हैं उतना काम नहीं कर रहे हैं बैल के साथ हम खेत में घूम नहीं रहे हैं पूरा जितना वो मेहनत करता था उतना हम नहीं करते कर रहे हैं तो प्रश्न इसलिए ये मुश्किल हो गया है लेकिन वो हमारे देश में अगर भैंस अगर है तो प्रकृति की देन है और प्रकृति ने उसको इसलिए दे रखा है कि हमारे माहौल हमारे समाज और जो मैं बोला कि वातावरण से सराउंडिंग से सीखो वहीं जाके सराउंडिंग ही नेचर है ठीक है तो उससे आपका इसका आंसर मिलता है उसमें इसका उत्तर छुपा है Okay, so as uh, we were discussing about uh, that, we are going to do the felicitation now. So for this, uh, I would like to call on stage uh, Mr. Nalin Sharma, the CEO at Lotus Enterprises. Can we give him a huge round of applause to Mr. Nalin Sharma? Okay, so let's start the felicitation, Mr. Sanjay Pandey. Let's give him a huge round of applause, everyone. Mr. Ashok Bansal.
अध्यक्ष अनिल भुटानी कन्वल कुमार लाल पटना टली सा मॉडरेटर मिस्टर मानस मिश्रा अपना यू ऑन लेस गिव देम ह्यूज ऑन द प्रोपोज एक बार दे आर द लास्ट पैनल ऑफ द डे Thank you so much, all of you, for joining us. And uh, with, the, with this, we are finally came to this closing event. So, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you all had a great day with our admirable speakers sharing knowledge and expertise on the diverse topics connecting with the entire ecosystem of businesses.